Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 27th of January, the Feast of St. John Chrysostom. Born around 347, John was raised in a Christian family of Antioch and ordained priest there, renowned for his preaching and public speaking. Chrysostom means golden-mouthed in Greek and denotes his celebrated eloquence. He rose to become Archbishop of Constantinople, but his denunciation of the abuse of power by ecclesiastical and political leaders and his radical biblical preaching and writing led to him being driven out of office and exiled by a new emperor in 407. He died of exhaustion travelling home. The Eastern Church's Divine Liturgy of St John Chrysostom is honoured by bearing his name, a great teacher of Orthodox Christian faith. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 47 Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great King over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. As Christ was raised by your glory, O Father, so may we walk in newness of life and rejoice to be called the children of God now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will not at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to address me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then the disciples deserted him and fled. This is the Passion of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Moments before this, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed while the disciples slept. He is fully awake to what is about to happen to him. He's seen it coming for ages and tried to alert them to realise and understand it'll be just as the scripture said it would. 
prophets of former times, right down to his cousin John, suffered a violent end, because the word from God they proclaimed was rejected, defied by God's chosen people. The storyteller has Jesus use the word foretold or fulfilled, thinking of him predicting his future. But his reading of scripture was honest and insightful. His teaching deliberately placed him at the head of a succession of prophets whose lives were sacrificed for offering God's word to the world. History repeats itself and Jesus struggles to accept freely his destiny, right down to his cry of surrender, not my will, but your will be done. He gives up his right to survive, and yet doing so, he's never more fully in command of the situation. Here come his accusers, and the temple police armed to the teeth, the kiss of Judas identifies Jesus for them to grab hold of him. For Judas, this is a moment when he expects Jesus to start something amazing and reveal that he's God's Messiah, but it all goes wrong. The disciples, shocked into wakefulness by the clamour of arms and sudden seizure of Jesus, react chaotically to the unexpected. Violent scuffles break out an ear is lost. Whose idea was it to bring swords to a prayer meeting? Already Jesus, on another occasion when the disciples got anxious, expressed disgust when he learned swords had been procured. But clearly the disciples didn't take the hint. He couldn't have spoken more plainly about the deadly futility of carrying weapons. Those who live by the sword will perish by the sword. He could ask the Father to unleash the angelic hosts to defend him, but he won't do so. This is the time to be as defenceless as prophets murdered in the past, just as Scripture observes was often the case. There's no escape for the prophet if God's word is rejected. Jesus stands tall, about to lose everything, but with nothing to lose, as he confronts the religious authorities and their enforcers with a most penetrating question. If we'd been there that night, we wouldn't have understood the Aramaic or the Greek spoken, but would certainly have understood the authoritative tone of the voice Jesus adopts. What is going on here? Why come armed at night when you could have picked me up any time I was teaching in the temple? But how could they, when they were so afraid popular support for Jesus would spark a riot if they arrested him there? The disciples run away, terrified by their own failure of nerve. So in chaos, not wanting to be arrested or punished. Fear reigns on all sides. It didn't work out the way Judas planned. He too is alone, remorseful, not seeing any way back to how it was at the supper table earlier that night before he left them. Although a captive bound, Jesus alone is now free from fear, his life being offered up as the unique and perfect sacrifice to free the world from its burden of sin. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth tremble before him. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the children of our world, that they may grow up knowing love and security. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are dying, for those who have no one on earth to pray for them, 
and we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Lord, graciously hear us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of truth and love, you gave to your servant John Chrysostom eloquence to declare your righteousness in the great congregation and courage to bear reproach for the honour of your name. Merciful grant to those who minister your words such excellence in preaching that all people may share with them in the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and lead us to life everlasting. Amen.